Hey, everybody, it's Kevin Uruta here with Eric Philippou, my co host of Digital Marketing Fast Lane. We have a very excited episode for you guys today. We're going to be talking about Facebook ads for real estate. This could be a company or real estate agents. But on a separate side note, the iTunes store podcast, I was looking for digital marketing and we were top six. So our podcast is moving up in the world. Nice. We're right near Neil Patel. So we're about to overtake them. I thought it was cool. I, I think I saw this like two days ago. So maybe it switched. Mm -hmm. But today we really want to be talking about, Eric, Facebook ads for real estate. And really, again, this could be for companies and this could be for realtors looking for more leads. And I think this is an interesting niche because mm -hmm. really this is what we would call kind of like lead generation, right, Eric? You're looking for an email, you're looking for a phone number, and what you're looking to do, or at least acquire, is someone to contact you for a listing that you might have. If you're thinking about this essentially through like a Facebook ad, I think this is where maybe there's some confusion, Eric. How would you think about it? Would you do a lead event? For example, for people listening, Facebook ad, landing page, and then thank you page. And on that thank you page, Eric, would you do a lead event or a purchase? So, I mean, let's say it's like a realtor or a dentist, or I don't know if it was just any kind of lead gen in general, mm -hmm. but you know, the complete registration mm -hmm. or whatever that event is, you might have it configured as. You would have a landing page. You can maybe do a lead magnet, like lead download magnet, this yep. free PDF for your lawyer, like um, the top 12 things to look at when, I don't know, you're at a traffic stop or whatever yeah, the something. situation, when you're buying a house, whatever the lawyer specializes in, some content, valuable content like that real estate, you know, things to look for when searching for a house or whatever it is, you know, there's a million of those listicles and articles. That's the kind of stuff, lead magnets, even just a good landing page that has mm -hmm. a form on it that you yep. select to make an appointment. That'll be good. Yeah. Uh, if it's local, then, you know, that's another thing too. Yeah. Just, it's a pretty simple funnel. Actually, I used to run this mm -hmm. for a living. The creative is really a differentiator. Yeah, this funnel is pretty simple. And, and this is why I think it can be deceiving because there's so many little ways that you can actually improve this and make this better for your team or your company. So the most common way that we've seen is this. It's a Facebook ad, which could be an image or a video that goes to a landing page that has like some sort of description of what you're selling or you're offering. And then usually it's on the right sidebar, like a contact name, last name, phone number, email, and maybe a message box, right? And then it, what we'll do is, a thank you or sort of like a enter. And then what usually happens, it's like the box usually collapses and it says, Hey, thanks for entering. So I would consider that the most common form, but I think there's like a step above that. And what I would say for that, instead of the box collapsing, you could have like a thank you page. Now on that thank you page, you can now obviously like if you're doing a lead magnet, you have the link to it, but on there from what we see and it's sort of like in the digital marketing space is you could have a calendar, right? Wow, like Calendly. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I think that is a little bit more complex. If there's a calendar, calendar, calend wow. Calendly. Calendly, yeah, on it. Yeah, Calendly, yeah, on it. Someone can actually book a call with you or your sales team. And then now they also have a Facebook integration. So now you can, you can track that as a call in Facebook and now you could get better qualified leads. And this is even better for you because now you have essentially two buckets of people, people that potentially just fill out the contact form. And now people that did a Calendly and the Calendly is probably more important. So you can move it up your queue faster and call the people that need help even faster or quicker. So that's like a better funnel. That's where strategizing Facebook ads makes a lot more sense. Of course, this is what's going to happen. Your CPA might be a little bit higher, but the people are going to be a little bit more qualified. You then, if you think about everything in general, you don't need all these sales guys or salespeople or customer service people just calling all day long, trying to get a lead to convert because you know, they've shown super high interest and it's sort of like e-commerce where you're trying to get that purchase. This person's so interested versus just an initiate checkout where you can have a sales guy saying, Hey, look, we know you're interested in this widget. Do you want to buy it? Call them and try to get them to convert. So let's just clarify what we mean. I think you said real estate or if you meant like a local business in local general. Local legion, yeah. Something like a dentist, it's an appointment form, is much different than a B2B SaaS salesperson. Yeah. I think putting it, it's obviously a much different sales process. The SaaS, it's also much different emotion. You're explaining something that's probably very unique and complex, whereas a dentist appointment, okay, come at Monday on 1 p.m. So it's a little different. It's just part of it. But I think the creative and stuff is very similar. Especially, yeah. let's take local business, for example. You have a couple things working for you from a paid acquisition standpoint. Let's say it's a dentist or an apartment leasing company or something. It's a very small geographic location. So you can get a lot of, you can cover the entire geography 
for very little ad spend. If there's a hundred thousand people within 10 miles of you, you can cover them a lot cheaper than you'd expect. You don't need a million, multi-million dollar ad campaign. So that's pretty good. A lot of times the CPMs are very low in these because you're not competing for very big markets. If you're in New York City, it might be a little different or LA, but if you're in Columbus, Ohio or something, not to shit on Columbus, Ohio, I think it's the best city in the world. I ran ads, local ads for all these cities and the CPMs in Columbus were a lot cheaper. The CPMs in Cleveland were a lot cheaper. The CPMs in Stowe, Ohio were a lot cheaper, as you can imagine. Low CPMs is your benefit. What's also good is an impression and frequency helps you in this if you're saturating a market because they're probably going to drive by your place at some point. There's probably people you're targeting who have driven by your place. They know what your place is. You probably have some awareness in the market that you don't even realize. So that's a couple of good things. What you have against you in that situation from an advertising standpoint is you might be a much better dentist or you might be, it's just hard to differentiate yourself. People just, they don't care. They think about, oh, this person has 4,000 reviews and this other person has 19 reviews. Maybe I'll try a busier one. The process for a local business is a little different. So you really want to differentiate yourself in a way, even if it means just a very good emotional appeal or just whatever it is. This is not your generic dentist. Usually it's like local from what I've seen is you need a good offer. If you're like a dentist, it's free root canal or something. It's like you need an offer. If you have 10 reviews and someone else has like a thousand reviews, you're not going to compete because reviews are going to just overtake you. So you need to say, take a shot with me because I'm going to give you something for free. That's another good one. What's also important is content in general, organic, doing ads that are, it's not direct response e-commerce. You can do ads that are page post engagement ad, or I don't want to say boosting posts, but that's essentially what it is. But this is a more organized way. Just keep running really good, exciting content consistently to your geographic location. It's a very low CPM, low cost kind of strategy. And that's something where even engagements and stuff make a big difference. And I've done this a lot for real estate and for other local businesses, and it works pretty well. Let's say you're a local business or a local marketer and you can't make ads. You really want to maybe look to hire a freelancer or even some sort of kid or student in college that can do this because, and it might sound weird, but kids these days know how to use all these apps, Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram. They know how to edit. They know how to cut real quick. It might take you an hour, but for them, it might take you 10 minutes and then you can pay them. I'll pay you like a hundred bucks for five videos and they can make them. Good example is my friend, Michelle runs a microblading company out here in, in New York and she does local ads and her CPMs are pretty high because it is New York city. But mm. what she's good at is she's really good at making ads look catchy. And the reason why she's good at it is because she used to be a fashion blogger or fashion Instagrammer. So she kind of knows what people in her space like and sort of what resonates well with them. Having good looking females, having good looking a text, making it pink, it attracts this type of person. Again, I think if you're a local business, you might not know what works for your niche and you just need to relay those ideas to the person making that ad because a student might not know what works well for microblading because it's not in it, but you can say, this is what I think works well. Can you go do that for me? And it's a fairly cheap thing. For what it's worth, the graphic design and the marketing, digital marketing, there's a big supply of people looking for jobs in this field that don't have a job. It's not like finance or something where it's a super hot, it's a very lucrative field, but it doesn't have a lot of prestige as much as the engineering, the finance, the lawyer kind of fields. So the job search is much harder if you have these kind of skill sets, or at least it used to be a few years ago. But there's a lot of hungry people ready to work hard, and um, you can pay them good, and they do a great job. It has a serious impact. People who know basic video editing, content editing, something that's someone you can look for, or people with just basic understanding of marketing. If they learn on the job, that's going to be so much more helpful. Talking back a little bit more about content a lot of these local businesses, something that I've seen from working with a few of them, they just don't have content such as videos, images, yeah. or clips. And really depends on what your niche is, right? So if you're like a doctor, if you're like a dentist, I think it's very simple. Just take some studio, take some shots of your office, show the doctor doing something, maybe have assistant pretend to be a patient person does that some sort of procedure on. There are very simple ways for you to get content. I think a lot of these local businesses get caught up in, I don't have anything. Well, then then they just go to stock content, which is fine. You can use stock libraries. They work well. But I think it's there's something to be said for having your own original images that shows the doctor or the person that's doing the service in it. Absolutely. I think there's some doctor on Instagram. I forgot if it's, 
Dr. Gundry? Instagram, this extremely handsome model doctor guy, I think he in somewhere in Queens or in New York City, who's oh. just like an Instagram celebrity. Might have been a dentist, actually, or orthodontist, one of yeah. these. But he's someone who's crushing it from a local business standpoint because he makes so much content. I actually don't have his Instagram handle. My friend was showing it to me. He's like, oh, I want to be like this. I'm like, that's good. And again, too, if you're a doctor or dentist, it's much better when you're the face of the company. People want to go and trust you. So there's a reason why e-commerce brands die to have a doctor on their product ads. You're a doctor. People would love to have you on their ad. All the supplement companies emailing Dr. Oz to be on their website. <laughs> it's a cliche almost in yeah. advertising that they'll put the model with a white lab coat who's not really a doctor just saying something. It works. Just a perception of someone in a white coat makes sense. This guy must be a doctor. As a doctor, if you're any field, honestly, you can make a lot of content and just talk on camera, talk about your service, and then have someone come in and edit it. It's, it's not as hard as people think. And I think it's, at least for me, from what I've seen, older generation, they're not comfortable being on camera, but kids these days are comfortable on camera. They are literally doing everything on camera. There's none of this shyness anymore. Growing up, you're like, oh, I don't want to be on TV or I don't want to be on YouTube. Now kids literally grow up on that. Yeah, that's wild. Especially the kids in college now that, I don't want to sound like an old boomer, but they grew up in the TikTok, Snapchat, literally grew up on there yeah. taking selfies and stuff. Doing the dance mm -hmm. videos, yeah. Let's see what else. Facebook guys, real estate, local businesses. A big thing, I think we mentioned it earlier in the episode, it's going to be landing pages. This is really going to be something that you need to do and sort of hone. And the reason why I say this is because as a local business or as a local service, you probably do more than one thing. So for example, I have a cleaning company or used to have one. We don't just do home cleanings. We do houses, a landing page for house cleaning. We could have a landing page for apartment cleaning. We can have a landing page for Airbnb cleaning. We can have a landing page for office cleanings. So you see how even though we are cleaning, there's different niches in that you want to have a landing page because when you run an ad, you want to say Mate Sellers is the number one cleaning company for offices. And then you want to take them to, again, a landing page that's about says office cleaning. And then in that page, you probably want to have how big is your office, how much square feet. And now your mm -hmm. contact form is more relevant to the user versus let's say you made a one landing page to sort of satisfy all those niches. If someone was at home, they're like, wait, why do you need how many square feet I'm in my office? I don't have an office. And then that's going to lead to drop off. Yeah, that's a really good way to do that. And it just shows that they just think you're more specialized for their needs and mm -hmm. it's more relevant and specific. There's a big psychological component, a benefit of that. So that's yep. a very good point. And then another thing too, lead generation or local businesses, if you're doing Facebook ads or Google ads, I think Eric, you probably experienced this call tracking. I think that's so important to be thinking about. There's companies like CallRail that will give you, and the reason why call tracking is important, if you're in many cities, if you're running a lot of ads, you eventually want to know, or even going back to what we we're just discussing about landing pages, each landing page could have a unique phone number. And then yeah. you could see if someone calls this number, we know is this ad about X, Y, and Z. Now you can use that and track that. I think what's happening and something to be thinking about is a lot of the businesses that are actually succeeding, like smaller businesses, are actually becoming a little bit more data-driven. They're not just running stuff. They're trying to figure out, hey, what's actually working because I want to make money. The shift I'm seeing from this is because a lot of the people now that are starting these local businesses grew up in this tech world. So for them, it makes sense. Or maybe people, older people, right? I don't want to say that, but for them, they don't understand this stuff. Most people now, if you're 22, 23, you're starting like a local business. I think for you, oh yeah, why can't I track who calls me? And something really, just in my experience, I've worked with a lot of small local businesses, geographically based, not online too. Yeah, They've never done social media before. They've never done internet yeah. stuff before, like a pizzeria in Brooklyn or something. Yeah. You have to be very careful who has say and what. It's not, oh, everyone in the company disapproves this. You have to be very methodical. You have to be, you have to be less emotional about it. You have to have a clear, oh, I'm doing this to get a high ROI. I'm not doing it because some guy on Yelp commented this. You'll post something, you'll make an ad and someone like an employee of that will say, I don't like how it says this instead of that or whatever it is. And they'll freak out like it's the end of the world or they'll get a nasty comment and they'll think their whole business is in jeopardy or something. You have to look at metrics, engagement metrics, click metrics, what's getting you the most clicks. That's how you know it's actually working, not what you like. Or yep. not what you think is good. Well, a lot of local businesses are very feelings-based because the owner is really into it, which is good. But again, the best companies out there, similar to you said, Eric, there's hundreds of pizzerias in Brooklyn. That's where I'm from. But how come there's only maybe three that are top? 
because the top three of those, the owners understand marketing. They understand, okay, I need to have online delivery. Okay, I need to have a phone number. I actually need to have somebody that picks up. It sounds so obvious. I had this exact conversation in an extreme way. I worked with the Brooklyn Pizzeria. I don't know what happened since COVID. First of all, the product is phenomenal. They make very good pizza, but he's not nearly as popular or their pizzeria is not nearly as popular as one called Lou Cali. He's saying, oh, Lou Cali's shit. He doesn't know anything about pizza. I'll destroy yeah. him any day in pizza. Yeah. Yeah, what you're saying is so yeah. important because a lot of times people think that, even for me, I used to tell you, Eric, I used to think it was the product. You should have a great product, but the product isn't going to win all the time. But go ahead, Eric. I literally told him, well, Lou Cali, Bono goes there. Celebrities go there. He creates some atmosphere for it or i think there's another one another pizzeria in brooklyn roberta's show master of none or something it's on tv all the time i think it's near me actually i always wanted to go there really good pizza it's an extreme example pizza in new york city the most competitive most competitive differences between them it's all marketing there is a 199 cents pizza right down the street it could be better but it's all about the marketing especially in the restaurant industry the restaurant industry is an extreme example and actually a very good one to look at on how marketing impacts how people make decisions, especially the Instagram craze. There's one called Black Tap. This restaurant, you've seen them on Instagram. They have these crazy milkshakes. Yeah, milkshakes. I've been there and it's not that good. They yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah. By the way, they don't care if we yeah. talk shit because they yeah. have lines down the block yeah. oh, every yeah. day. I think even in COVID, but before COVID, they would section off. It was, you're getting onto an airport line. It's crazy. JFK. They make so much money. The food is, it's like any it's other so diner, par. especially for New York yeah. City. But the marketing is everything because they go out of their way to make things look crazy. It looked really good. It's a strawberry milkshake with three donuts stacked onto it. And And uh, and some sort of cookies. Insulin shot. But you get the idea. They're lined up out the door. Restaurant niche is so competitive that you should be looking at why are certain companies really good and some aren't. Been to Black Tap. How come their line is out the door? Several locations, which for a restaurant in New York City is a very big deal. For people listening or even local businesses listening, you should wonder, why is this restaurant have a line, but the place next to it doesn't? Some rest, you'll, you'll see the line for Black Tap and then the restaurant next door just be like completely empty. And I just like yeah. so demoralizing, I think, for that restaurant, the next restaurant. Or people go there as like pity. Okay, this is going to be a long line. Let me go get a snack. What's the equivalent for your business? If you're yep. a dentist, if you're a realtor, if you're something, a lot of times they're just, they look like a model. So they get a lot of Instagram engagement. That's what the world is. A lot of the times it's maybe, I'm not saying do magic tricks. You shouldn't be doing dancing while you're operating on someone. Yeah. I think someone got arrested for that. Oh, Obviously really? yeah. there was something like that. They were dancing while doing surgery and they posted it on TikTok or something. It went viral. They got arrested, especially if you're in a medical field. Yeah. But think of what's something that even people on TV, celebrities in your niche, why are they famous and you're not? They might not know as much about you or whatever. The way they market themselves, maybe they have a YouTube channel, maybe they have TikTok, they're big on that. You have to really think about it from a marketing standpoint. And plus, when we say local business, it doesn't mean that you're small. It just means you could be a local business in in many cities. I ran ads for a local business that generated tens of millions a year. Doesn't mean small, but and that's sort of like your advantage too, because people sometimes can underestimate you. Maybe SMS, do we want to talk a little bit about that? So SMS, I'll be honest, I'm not an expert in it, so don't take my advice. It's a very rapidly growing field. Every marketing person will tell you that they're suddenly an expert in it when they just read three blog posts about it. They just read like the attentive blog post about why you need SMS marketing. But anyways, but SMS, just sort of like the concept, because I think similar to like anything, me and Eric at least understand the concept. SMS is a booming space. I always read my text messages. Eric, you probably read yours all the time. It's a weird thing now. With your phone, you see a message. So open rates are super high. So that's kind of what people are pitching you. SMS has like a 90% open rate. I'm not clicking any of these messages at all. Like I've never, yeah. I've never clicked one once. All these kind of content where you can get them on their text. I know an SMS, just the attentive, they say you have to, like you can't spam people. Yeah. There's a lot of regulation Rules. at it. Yeah. Like you actually get, not arrested, but- Phone ban, right? You get disabled a lot faster. You have to be careful. SMS is something that, but for a local business, it could be really cool. If you're like a local shop, it's a little more intimate. It's like getting a text, hey, this is in stock now. There's a cheese shop near me that has Jenny's ice cream. Jenny's ice cream gets his own pot. Jenny's ice yeah. cream. For people listening too, so I have a cleaning company, yeah. Mate Sailors. Our phone number is actually a grass, grasshopper number, I think, or we're using air call now, but then you can also text that same number. So we actually get that into our Slack. We use something called ZipWhip. It's called zipwhip.com. And customers are literally ask us, hey, do you have availability for cleaning today? That is such a easier 
conversation to have than someone on the phone because it's quicker and it's also like less sentences. It's easier because we can send direct links through text and we can say, hey, yep, we do book it here. We can say, hey, give me five minutes. I'm going to uh, look it up versus maybe be on the phone call and be like, hey, give me five minutes. And then you're half hanging, typing. We use it. It works really well. It's very interesting to me to see how SMS has grown for e-commerce because I've been using it for my local company for maybe six years now. It's crazy how it's just grown. Every industry is sort of adopting it. I think we're going to see it soon for, I know you mentioned SaaS earlier, right? But maybe SaaS later on, but SaaS is still very phone call. But can there be an SMS component to that? Maybe, who knows? We interviewed a guy, Dennis Hexdot. By the way, we interviewed Dennis. So check out our previous episode on that. It's a year ago now. What's a year ago? Yeah. So he runs a really big SMS e-commerce platform. And again, their whole value prop is that they're not automated. So you probably have experience automated and they're really about having a customer service rep or somebody on there to actually answer your question. And I think that is where the magic in SMS is versus what I'm seeing now. It looks very automated. It's, you sort of get turned down. So I think it's about how do you make your SMS marketing real and it's for mate sailors, we just have people that answer them and that's the only way we can yeah. replicate it. That's really, really good. The chatbot thing, I've tried it for yeah. a lot of local businesses actually. And it's cool for a bit, depending on the situation, I didn't go super deep into it, but it was around like 2018 when chatbots were really chatbots taking were, off. Yeah, that was a like massive yeah, time. Yeah. Was, oh, it's the future of marketing, but yeah. I'm sure it's still good now, but it's not like I as a consumer or in all yeah. these marketing circles love it. The novelty as marketers and as businesses, we want to make systems, but there's just some stuff that you just can't replicate fully yet because it just yeah. doesn't feel human. And I think that's what's interesting about some of these platforms. Think about when someone calls a phone number, you expect a person, expect a person, even though there's automated messages, but eventually you're just like, okay, I want to talk to somebody real. I'll say the most random thing so that, so that the system can get messed up and like, okay, I'm going to transfer you to a customer service rep. And local businesses have that advantage because there is an expectation to get good service or talk to humans. That's why I want to go somewhere local. I don't yep. want to talk to someone far away. There is actually a, an expectation of better service. If I go to a local cheese shop, I mentioned the people there, they tell me, well, what, what's this about this food or whatever? This, Eric, your hair's looking good today. Oh, thank you. Let me get Man. two cheeses today. Let me get two <laughs> yeah. cheeses today. Whatever it is. I don't need cheese a lot. I'm just saying that's a good example of where the customer service is a big difference than if you order on Amazon or something. And that's yeah. how you'll beat these big companies too. That's the only way you'll beat them is having great customer service because that's something that people will remember. And it's the biggest differentiator. I think there's a lot of juicy stuff there. And if you have a lot of questions, comment them in the YouTube channel or email Kevin at voidmedia.com. Whatever the question is, just let them know. Just let us know. And then we'll answer. And then again, we'll be back for another episode. Again, we kind of talk about SMS marketing. We have a previous episode on that. So you can check, look at the podcast. We talked a little bit about marketing angles. We have an episode that we did for monday.com that talks about marketing angles. So that's something to check out. Anything else, guys, let us know. Please make sure to like and follow us on iTunes. And any questions or comments, leave it below on the YouTube channel. See you guys next week. Bye. Good. Bye.